Come on, say it. It's turning around for me. Come on, come on, say it. It's turning around for me. Come on, say it. It's turning around for me. All this week, I want you to say that. It's turning around for me. When you go home this evening, I want you to say it. It's turning around for me. I want you to walk around your house and say it. It's turning around for me. I want you to hum it on your job this week. When you mow in the lawn, I want you to say it. Hey, when you're shopping in the grocery store, I want you to say it. Break the music. They ain't gonna have no music. Come on, say it. Y'all break it. Say it. Come on, declare it. Come on, put it in the atmosphere. Say it. Woo, I feel it. Come on, say it. Speak it, speak it. It's turning around for me. That's what it's going to sound like at home. It's Ain't going to be no drum beat at home. You got to say it. <laughs> Ain't gonna be no worship leader at home. You gotta say it. When the devil comes in like a flood, you gotta say it. <laughs> you gotta make that declaration. It's turn. Hesh on the wall. <laughs> Come on, say it. It's Come on, Pleasant Grove, lift it up. It's turning. It's turning around for me. Come on, say it, say it. I feel chains breaking in this house. Come on, it's turning around. Come on, it's turning around. Somebody's been healed right now. Somebody's been healed right now. Somebody's been healed right now. It's turning, it's turning around for me. Hallelujah. You better receive your healing. You better receive your joy. You better receive your turning around right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We receive it, we receive it. 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 I mean, I know it's turning around for you. Come on, lift those hands until you're just turning around. It's turning around. It's turning around for me. Come on and just wave your hands. Come on and do it. It's turning around. Hey, hey. In the highest place, the highest praise. Hallelujah! 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 I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. When you praise him. He'll dispatch angels. I said, when you praise you, he'll swoop angels and they'll fight your battles for you. Clap your hands. Somebody ought to praise him right now. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Glory to God. Come on, lift both hands to heaven and tell him thank you right now. Right where you are. Worship for Worship him for what he's already done. What he's already done. Somebody tell him thank you already. Thank you in advance. 
Thank you in advance, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty God we serve. How great thou art. He's a wonderful counselor. Mighty God. There's strength in the power in that name, Jesus. How many know there's power in the name, Jesus? The devil flee at the name, Jesus. There's no other name where you might be saved, but at the name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. He's turning it around. You have to put your hands on yourself and say, he's turning around for me. He's turning it around. As we speak, he's turning it around. It's working in your favor. Because through it all, you made it. The last thing you went through did not take you out. You've been through the fire yet. Been through the flood, broken in pieces, and left all alone. Whew. But I don't have no doubt. It didn't take me out. I'm still here. Somebody shout, I'm still here. And I, and I got a praise on it. I got to get it out. I got a praise in it. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just have to let it go. Don't keep it well up in the inside. Don't hold. Uh, it ain't going to keep. You got to get them out. Uh, hallelujah. And you're in a place where you can praise him. You don't have to be shy to praise him. You won't sound like popcorn in here because I got a witness. I got some praisers in here with me. How many love the Lord? I, I said, I love the Lord. Come on. Ooh. If you've been good to you, give him one 30 second crazy praise. Come on, give him a crazy praise.
Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Somebody tell him thank you right now. Wave those hands. I feel a, a heavy anointing in this place right now. Something you need from God. You need him to work a miracle. He's doing it right now. possibly can. If you can, have your stuff. But if you feel like praising him, go ahead and praise him. Been through the stormy rain. Oh, I may. Been through the stormy rain. Somebody don't say I made it. Thank you. Whew. You can have your seat if you can. Hey! hey! Sometimes I had to cry, wipe the tears from my eyes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, I made it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the Spirit of God is moving. We've been talking about a portrait of God. We have talked about Him and His attributes and, and the part that He describes Himself as. He characterized when he talk about who he is in the Bible, we know that God is not human. But when he describes himself, he uses human terms, anthropomorphic terms. He characterizes himself, that's human, human anatomy, the makeup of the hands, and eyes, and feet, arms, 
No man has never seen God. It says that in John chapter 4, verse 4, he says, no man they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth because they hadn't seen him. Since you hadn't seen him, your faith said that he is alive. Little faith, little God. Big faith, big God. I believe who he says he is. And that's why I worship him in the spirit. And when the spirit is moving, I want to move with the spirit. I don't want to burden God when the spirit is moving. I tell him, let go and have your way. Oh, I thank him this morning. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 13. We talked about the hands of God. This is a series of messages. We talked about the mouth of God last week. And this week, you give me the message after I read this scripture. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. What do I want to preach about today? The eyes of God. The eyes of God. There's nothing uncovered with God. He sees everything. Man has Man has created a telescope that can go up into the heavens and they can see a square about two feet. Can you imagine how better God's eyes is than man's telescope? The eyes has many parts. I want these eye doctors in here to correct me if I'm wrong. But the most important part of your eye is the retina. The retina sees light and shadow, and it sends a nerve to your brain to tell you what you see. You have 75 rods in that retina. See, I mean 75 million rods in that retina. Amen. And you have seven millions other parts of that eye, part of that retina that is really good. It causes you to see. That's in one of your eyes. One of your eyes have that many rods, 75 millions. And yet, you can't even see what God can see. You can't even see things that God sees things because he's God. He can see when nobody else can. Have you ever been in your room in your home when I grew up? They always had a picture that was a concave picture of Jesus. And when you walk around the house, look like he'd just be looking at everything you do that picture. Anybody had one of those pictures? Like as you move, he's moving his eyes right with you. I stole something out of the refrigerator one day and I come through there and look like he said. And I said, I'm going to put it back. Because it looked like he was looking at me. I want to tell you, he sees everything. Because he got an all-seeing eye. He, 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 he knows where you're going. He knows where you've been. He knows all about you. There is nothing here. Even your problems, they're not hid from him. The crime that you've been doing, he sees your tears. He sees the hurt in your life. Because number one, he got penetrating eyes. Somebody shout, he got penetrating eyes. One, one, one guy told his friend, he said, man, 
All I can see spots. All I can see is spots. He said, have you seen a doctor? He said, I hadn't seen no doctor. All I can see is spots. But see, God ain't like that. He don't see spots. He see you. He see who you can be. He see who he created you to be. He sees the most inner part of you because he has penetrating eyes. So you can sit here and put, say who you want people to believe you are and you can try to look like what you want them to see you as. But only God can see who you really are. Because he has penetrating eyes. Somebody sitting here today and say, you know, sometimes you come to church and they say, well, who been telling Pastor Hale my business? He don't have to tell me your business. When the word go forth, his eyes see you. He knows all about you. And he'll tailor make a word just for your problem. He would tailor make it and send it to you, wrapped up in your pew, and hand deliver it. And all you can do sometimes is wiggle your toes. You just might as well say, ouch, because that was your word. God gave me a mail. He made me the mailman, and I just delivered the mail. Don't get angry with me. You made the bill. That's your bill. Now pay it. The mailman didn't make the bill. Don't get mad because he brought it to you. Ain't God all right? Ah, yes, he has penetrating eyes. He can see when nobody else can see. Why? How, how do you know, Pastor Hare? In Job 34 and 21, he says, For the eyes are upon the ways of man, and he see it all his goings. Everything you do, he see you. His eyes are upon you right now. His eyes, when you leave here, you can act all sweetie. Two shoe and apple pie in front of Pastor Hare. But when you leave here, his eyes go to and fro. They don't stay just in Pleasant Grove. It's going to your house. It's going wherever you go. Ain't God all right? They're not stationary. They go to and fro. Beholding the good and the evil. God see your good too. Don't think he don't see your good. Nobody ain't recognizing that. God see you. Keep on doing good. Be not weary in well doing. For in due season. You're going to reap if you faint not. Because God sees. God sees everything you are doing. If you're giving and loving and caring, God sees it. And you will not go unrewarded for doing good. Don't let nobody fool you. Girl, I wouldn't do all that. No, I, we know you wouldn't, but I will. I, I, I saw that when you first walked up. You wouldn't. That's why I didn't ask you to do nothing. Ain't God all right, because you won't do nothing, but I will. I just said, he said, who shall I send? He said, oh, send me. I go. Oh, I wish I had some folks in here said, here I am, I, Lord, send me. If mother don't go, I, father don't go, I will go. Lord, send me. You, me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me nearer every day. I don't care if I'm pained by heartache, scorned by loved one. If you just give me a little sunshine every now and then. Lord, I'll be willing just to run on all the way. His penetrating eyes. He can see you. He can see you. In, in Hebrews chapter 13, it says, he, seen, he see you clearly. And then in Proverbs 15 and 3, it says the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Come on. This is the word, folks. The eyes of the Lord is in every place. 
Not just here. Beholding the evil and the good. I just told you. It's in every place. Everywhere you go, he's looking right at you. You can't tell that lie and put sugar on it. Ain't God all right? Our vision is so limited, but God can penetrate where we can't see. I remember when Samuel went down to anoint the king. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. The, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance. See, you don't look at folks by what they look like on the outside. You'll get messed up looking at folks at what they look like on the outside. They can be dressed to kill. And believe you and me, on the inside they will kill you. Listen to me. Look not on his counsel or on the height of his stature. I don't care how he looks, how handsome, how beautiful, how well dressed, his physical physique. Don't look at that. They used to win high preachers if they were little and short and ugly. Back in the day, they didn't hire. If you weren't tall and good looking, they didn't hire preachers. Oh, I, I see a preacher back there say, you telling the truth, Pastor. But I've always been hired. <laughs> Y'all get that when you get home. Y'all didn't get it. I say I'm good looking. If you don't say it, I say, I say that to myself. If you don't believe you're good looking, you that's miserable. You look in the mirror. Tell yourself, I look good. It me. In your image and your likeness, not the shape of my head, Ooh, but the beauty of my soul. Ain't God all right? Somebody kind of wave your hand and tell the Lord, thank you right now. Since you made me beautiful, I'm going to fix up what you made. I ain't going to just look any kind of way, though. I'm going to put some good stuff on what you made. Oh, ain't God all right? Somebody wave your hand because he, he see you. He see if you care about yourself. You don't care about yourself. What do what, what, what you think other people going to do? People treat you like you treat yourself. You carry yourself like trash, that's how they're going to treat you. You walk around, young lady, and showing everything, that's how they're going to look at you and whistle at you. He whistle at me. Yeah, you, well, put some clothes on. Ain't God all right? Yes, yes, yes. He said, I don't see his man sees, but what he say he do? He said, but God looks at what? He looks at the heart. You're looking at the outward appearance, but he said, I'm looking at your heart. I don't care how you look on the outside. If your heart not right, you still don't look good. When you clean up on the inside, some folks try to clean folks up before they get cleaned up on the inside. They come to church with different clothes. Oh, look what you wearing. What you got? They ain't, I ain't got to clean up yet. Once you clean up, you know what to wear. Once you get saved, your conscience will tell you what to put on and what not to put on. You don't have to skin no fish. Come on. You just need to catch it. Ain't God all right. You try to skin it before you catch it and come off the hook and go back in the pond. Ain't God all right. God sees, somebody shout, God sees the, the heart. Secondly, secondly, and after he sees you, you are precious in his eyes. Can I tell you somebody who don't feel good this morning, you are precious in his eyes. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're precious in his eyes. You might need to say that to yourself one more time. Say it to yourself, I'm precious in his eyes. That's why I walk around with my head up. That's why when I go into an employer's office, I can look him in the face, in the eye. I don't have to look down. I don't have nothing to hide because I'm precious in his eyes. How many know he know you before you knew yourself? In John 1, 47 through 51, he says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed. I know you. You're Israelite. But he said, In whom is no God. I know your heart already. You ain't got no evil in you. And then Nathanael looking at him like, How he, how he know me? Ain't God all right? 
Look what he says to him. He said, and Nathanael said it to him, how do you know me? How do you know me? Jesus answered and said unto him, before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw you. My eyes go everywhere. Before he called you to come to me, I saw you sitting under a fig tree. Before you even came to Jesus, he saw you. He knows you. Ain't God all right? You think he don't know you. Baby, he knows you. He's been knowing you even before you was conceived in your mother's womb. You precious in his eye. I remember David said, Second Chronicles 16 and 9, it also says, Jesus worked for the eyes of the Lord, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. You know what I like about his eyes? I'm glad they go everywhere. Somebody said, boy, I, I hate you preaching about that this morning because he's seeing me every day. Yes, but guess what? I like it because it go to and fro, beholding me to show himself strong on my side, on behalf of them. Look at that. Show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfected toward him. If your heart is right toward God, his eyes going everywhere. Before you get there, he already scoped out the scene. He's already done things. He's looking for your, your good. He's getting talking to the right people for you. As soon as you walk in the door, he's going to take care of you. The enemy thought he was doing something to me on this last job. And I said, and I said, God, I'm going here. I don't know who the principal is. I don't know who he, who he is and what's going on. When I get there, a couple of weeks passed by, God said, you read. You better go read. Uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, Elijah 44 and 6. He says, I am going to sustain you. Wherever you go, I'm going to sustain you. I, I wish I had a witness in here. As soon as I got there, the lady who's my supervisor was like an angel to me. Treated me like I was a king. I told her this morning, God's going to give her blessings after blessings. You're going to be just like that widow woman. That sustained Elijah. In Zarephath, after his brook dried up. See, sometimes your brook will dry up on you. But you better obey God because his eyes is also providential. Come on, somebody. His eyes are providential. He always had, have the place where you're going and he's taking you somewhere. You better not stop and say, I ain't going. You got to have a heart toward him and love him. And he'll work strong on your behalf. He'll put the people right there to take care of you. You don't have to worry. Somebody ought to shout glory. When he sends you somewhere, you don't have to worry about what, how you're going to eat, how you're going to pay for it. He said, I already got somebody there that's going to make a way. They're going to give to you when nobody else won't give. They're going to bless you when nobody else will bless you. You just go and do because you are in my eye. You are providential. I have providential eyes. Not just penetrating eyes. I guard things ahead for you. I've already went in front of you and paved the way for you. Sometimes times, things don't happen like you think they ought to happen. Then later on you realize, if I, if I had done that, I would have messed up. How many know that his, his, his prevention is your divine protection? Because his eyes see what you don't see. I wish I had some folks to praise God with me right now. Kind of lift your hands and say he has providential eyes. He knows where I'm on my way to. He knows the way I should take. How many know he knows the way? He knows the right people to put in my path. He knows the doors that he's going to open for me. He know what you're going to run into. He's, he's already seen it. 
and the little trial you're going through right now, he see a bigger one, so he got to develop your muscles for the next one. Because either you are in a storm, or you just come out of one, or you're getting ready to go in one. That's why I praise him all the time. I don't praise him when I'm up. I praise him when I'm down. I praise him when I'm up. I praise him. He said, I will, David said, I bless the Lord at all times, and his praising shall continually be in my mouth. And then he told somebody, come on and help me praise the Lord. He's too big for me to praise him by myself. I need you to help me lift this big God up. Because I'm glad about his eyes. I said, I'm glad about his eye. Somebody lift your hand and say, I'm glad he see me. I'm glad he sees that old enemy. When my eyes can't see him, he see the enemy. And the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against him. When he's lurking behind the walls, trying to construe something together, God, already peeped around there and scoped him out. Say, hell, get on your knees tonight. The enemy's out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I came that you may have life and more abundantly. Ain't God all right? Aren't you glad? that he's seen you before you knew who he was I'm so glad I'm glad I'm glad about it I'm glad tell your neighbor shake somebody's hands a neighbor I'm glad that he got an all seen eye oh Lord he sees the stranger hair on my head he count every one of them. Ain't God all right? He sees where I'm going. He sees where I've been. Because in Luke 12 and 7, I heard he'll count the stranger hair on your head. He even the very hairs on your head, they're all numbered. You got a number, one of your strengths. Number one, number two. You got a number on them hands. Ain't God all right? Psalms 139 and 4 says the word. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, our Lord, thou knowest it all together. He know what you're going to say. Even before you say it, he sees what you're going to say. Even before you say it, ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? So don't think that slip. God already know you was going to cuss your boss out. Ain't God all right? He already know you was going to lie on somebody. Ain't God all right? In some. 139 and 2 He knows he Thou knowest My down sitting Thou knowest My uprising He knows When you're going to be down He knows When he's going to raise you up Ain't God alright He already Seen you down He already you going up, you got to see yourself as God sees you. Ain't God all right? Oh, Lord. In Matthew 6 and 8, he says the word, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father sees what you need, whatever you need. My God see it already. He knows you ain't got to worry about it. He sees what you need. He got everything. He got everything that 
you need ain't God all right I heard in Psalm 139 and 16 he says that God that I that see my substance he saw me yet being unperfect he saw you when you weren't doing right and I book all of my members you saw me before my mother had me when she conceived me in the womb you already booked my members you saw me preaching in Pleasant Grove you saw me Living the way I'm living, you saw me giving the way I'm giving. I mean, I know he see you. Aren't you glad? Are you glad that God sees you? Ain't God all right? You don't have to worry about it. One day there was a ship that left the British harbor going to carry some cargo over. And the man says, the captain of the ship says, well, how can we get there? What if we have trouble and we can't see the trouble? He said, just call us back and let us know you got trouble. Oh, Lord. They were going along. He said, but live by this. Keep the course. Stay on course all the way over there. And the man driving the ship stayed on course. Stayed on course all the way over there. Got to the other side. And when he got to the other side, there was another big British ship coming out of the darkness. Was falling down, waiting in case somebody tried to attack them. They said we was back in the dark. We acting over y'all. You couldn't see us, but we're still right there. I want to tell somebody right now, stay on course. I don't care what's coming your way. You can't see God, but he, he's standing back right there. He's standing right there, right by your side. Stay on course. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor. Neighbor, stay on course, stay 